Thank you so much. Um, our next speaker is uh, Michael Razik, who's um, at Share the Mics uh, at Share the Mics Cyber Fellow here at New America, and his presentation is Civil Cyber Defense and the Law. Good afternoon. My name is Michael Razik, and I'm a Share the Mic and Cyber Fellow here at New America. And my research is focused on civilian cyber cores, especially those formed by several US states and the laws that govern them. So. Before we talk about that, I want to set the stage just a little bit and talk about why civil defense or civil cyber defense are necessary. In 2018, the FBI published a report, it's an annual report, that said that there were around 350,000 cyber incidents that were reported. And across those 350,000 cyber incidents, the cost was around $2.5 billion. If we fast forward to 2023, the most recent report, those numbers increased significantly. The number of cyber crimes more than doubled, and the cost went up to 12.5 billion. And in both cases, those numbers are likely significant undercounts. And these problems stem in large part from a couple different factors. One is insecure technology. This was highlighted by the head of CISA recently at the Black Hat Security Conference. And underscoring that fact is the number of vulnerabilities that you can see on the screen, which is 29,000 that were reported last year. Coupled with insecure technology is the fact that we don't have enough people to help secure the technology, either at the outset or, or after the fact. Currently, we have around 470,000 cybersecurity job openings in the US. A lot of these are jobs that require specialist certifications. The US government announced an initiative that is going into effect now. It was, it was announced earlier in the year, and now it's actually happening where a number of cybersecurity roles with the federal government that previously required four-year degrees will no longer require four-year degrees. They'll be focused on skills. But we still have a long way to go to address the workforce gap. And there was a recent article from Tech Policy Press that said we would need to train 40% of all new workforce entrants in cybersecurity over the next several years in order to close the workforce gap. So what do we do in the meantime? Civil defense is not a new concept. It's, it's been around for a long time, we use organizations like the Coast Guard Auxiliary, we use organizations like the Civil Air Patrol, we rely on volunteer firefighters, we rely on the Medical Reserve Corps, and, and the list goes on where we rely on volunteers to help protect civilian populations in times of conflict, during emergencies, and to help them prepare beforehand. So in a digital world, then civil defense has to include digital infrastructure. It has to include information and information systems that we all rely on. So you can think of civil cyber defense, cyber civil defense, <laughs> civilian cyber defense. All these different terms will land on one, but they're all used interchangeably to refer to a comprehensive whole of society approach to cyber defense. And an ecosystem has begun to emerge to support civil cyber defense. And this includes NGOs like the Cyber Peace Institute, which has Cyber Peace Builders, a platform that allows volunteers to be connected with NGOs and other high-risk high organizations. It includes for-profit corporations like the industrial security firm Dragos that started OT-CERT to bring together industrial company, companies with industrial operations to share information and resources about uh, security for industrial control systems. It includes universities. So there are now university cybersecurity clinics in over 20 states. And that's, and, and that's happened in the last five years or so, and that number will continue to increase. And it also includes state civilian cyber cores and even some efforts at the federal government that my research is focused on. At the federal level, at the, we'll talk more about the states, but at the federal level, there have been some conversations around uh, a proposed federal civilian cyber core. The Marine Corps has established its own cyber auxiliary. And recently, CISA launched a high-risk communities portal 
that helps to provide resources to people interested in volunteering who have different skill sets that they, that they can use to assist these organizations. This is what the cyber volunteer map looks like at the state level now. Maryland, Michigan, Wisconsin, Ohio, and Texas all formed state civilian cyber corps under their departments of IT, emergency management, or under state military departments where individuals can volunteer their time to assist state and local entities or critical infrastructure organizations with education and training, with vulnerability and risk assessments, and with incident response. And the use of volunteers naturally brings out a few different legal issues that have to be addressed. So just to give one example, the state of Michigan, when it first launched its Civilian Cyber Corps, found that it wasn't utilized as much as it could be, even though this resource was available. So a few years later, when Michigan codified its Civilian Cyber Corps in statute, one of the changes was allowing the CISO, the state CISO rather than the governor, to deploy the Civilian Cyber Corps so that this resource could be more effectively utilized. So those are the sorts of legal issues that come up, among others, like confidentiality, potential liability for volunteers, the qualifications and training of volunteers that need to be addressed in order for civilian cyber corps to be effectively used and for states to be able to focus on operational issues. So this is not a temporary, this is not a temporary solution. Uh, over 80 years after the medical reserve, after the uh, Coast Guard Auxiliary and the Civil Air Patrol were formed, they're still in service. And the Coast Guard Auxiliary, as an example, still does education for mariners, just like cyber volunteers do education and training. They do vessel safety inspections, just like cyber volunteers do risk assessments and vulnerability assessments. And they assist the Coast Guard with search and rescue missions, just like just like cyber volunteers assist with incident response. So if I could leave you with one thing, I would say that it's important for everyone here to understand that this ecosystem exists, that is continuing to evolve, and that everyone here should look to get engaged in some form or fashion, whether that's volunteering, whether it's supporting your organization or individuals in your organization to volunteer, donating to some of these organizations, or just helping to raise awareness. Because without cybersecurity, because everything is connected, we won't have much security. Thank you.